Okay, good good afternoon. Let's go ahead and get started. So welcome back to biocomputational modeling. Uh, today I'm going to provide a brief overview uh, of what is uh, biocomputational modeling. Um, let's go ahead and start with a quick review of what is biomedical engineering. Well, if you look at uh, NIH, the working definition of biomedical engineering is someone that integrates physical, chemical, mathematical, and computational sciences and engineering principles to study biology, medicine, behavior, and health. And it's someone who advances fundamental concepts, creates knowledge, all, ranging all the way from the molecular system all the way to the organ systems and develops in innovative biologics, materials, processes, implants, that would be biomaterials, devices, would be medical devices like a pacemaker, and uh, informatic approaches uh, for the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disease for patient rehab rehabilitation and improving health. So uh, a biomedical engineer is very multidisciplinary uh, engineering. And again, uh, the computational sciences uh, play a big role in it. So when we're talking about modeling, what kind of modeling are we talking about? Uh, the, there are several different ways you can model. Uh, um, uh, in fact, uh, um, there are three different ways that you can do a model. One, you can make a mathematical model, okay? That includes uh, uh, mathematical equations uh, that are, try to approximate uh, the world around us or the system that you're trying to, trying to model and make uh, get results based off of calculations. Another type of model is a physical model, okay? That's uh, where you could um, develop a, a maybe a small-scale prototype um, and try to physically model the system and get results from it that way. The third way is to use a computer or a computational model, okay? Now, in a computational model, that's what will be—that's the type of modeling uh, we'll be doing in this class, where we use a computer to solve all the equations for us, the differential equations for us, and where, but we have to set it up, okay? And something important to note about models, okay, is that uh, uh, all models are wrong but some are useful, okay? That's an important saying when it comes to computational modeling. Uh, and the model is only as good as the assumptions you make and uh, uh, things like that, okay? Um, so let's talk a second about uh, uh, mathematical modeling versus uh, physical modeling or experimental model modeling, okay? So, um, uh, again, uh, an engineer uh, uh, can, can study uh, systems either experimentally by taking tests, uh, by making tests and taking measurements, or an engineer can study the system mathematically with a mathematical model uh, by analytically or uh, analyzing the situation with equations and calculations. So, uh, and both have their pros and cons, okay? The physical model, or the experimental approach, uh, has an advantage that you deal with the actual physical system, okay? And uh, the desired quantity is determined by the measurements uh, of that. And it could be, you know, a scaled down prototype, a smaller version. Um, and uh, um, so that's the benefits of an of a actual physical model, is that you can make measurements uh, from it. Okay. Uh, one of the downsides of this type of modeling is uh, physical modeling, is that uh, it's, it can be expensive. 
okay? And it can be time consuming because with a physical model, you actually physically have to build and put together uh, a prototype and collect measurements from that uh, prototype. So sometimes it's all, all uh, even impractical to do. Uh, if you want to model something inside the human body, you might not be able to uh, physically do it. So the other approach is this analytical approach or this mathematical uh, modeling approach. Okay, so this approach includes, uh, you know, num uh, numerical um, equations and calculations. And one of the advantages of it is that it's fast and inexpensive, especially if you can just do it on, uh, you know, pen and paper. One of the downsides of it is oftentimes the results are subject to the accuracy of your assumptions or your approximations uh, and uh, how well your equations uh, model the real world, okay? So the basic workflow when it comes to modeling, okay, is um, is you start with some sort of physical problem, okay, that you want to model, and you I, you take a look at the problem and identify okay, what are the important variables uh, that uh, govern or change in the physical problem, okay, and then based on that you make assumptions and approximations, and then you apply the relevant uh, governing equations based on the physical laws. That typically leads to a differential equation, okay, uh, the, uh, um, and then you uh, can apply an applicable solution technique to the differential equation and apply different boundary conditions or initial conditions and uh, solve the problem and you ha end up with a solution to the problem, okay? So uh, in this process, differential equations is often uh, very important. Um, the description of most scientific problems uh, involves equations that relate uh, the change of some key variable to another key variable, okay? So this is, uh, this is what uh, differential equations does for us. Uh, and a lot of the governing equations do involve differential equations. However, um, some, um, some problems, uh, or many problems that we encounter, can often be solved without resorting to differential equations uh, uh, as well. So there's, but again, the accuracy um, uh, will depend on the assumptions and approximations that you make, okay? Uh, let me give you an example here of a model. So let's say we wanted to model um, a helicopter flying in the air. So that's going to include, um, actually that could be a very complex model. Uh, um, or it could be simplified into something as simple as a, an elliptical body and some ro rotor disc, okay? So uh, when it comes to modeling, you can either have a very complex and very accurate model, or you can have a simple and not so accurate model. Uh, um, both, of the, both of those have pros and cons. So the simplified models often used to, to obtain approximate solutions uh, to very difficult engineering problems. In this example, uh, this helicopter's rotor is modeled just as a disc, okay? Um, and um, the helicopter body is mo modeled by a simple ellipsoid. So this simplified model uh, will yield uh, results uh, of the overall airflow um, and uh, um, but it'll be it'll be it'll have some errors because it's simplified right so the more complex you make your model uh, the more accurate it will be 
but uh, oftentimes that it will co um, come at a cost, a cost in terms of um, uh, complications and uh, and when it comes to computational modeling, it'll come at a cost of computational resources. Um, and so typically the right choice is usually to, to select the simplest model that yields satisfactory results, okay? So, and that's up to you as an engineer to decide. What is the simplest model that will give satisfactory results? Does it need to be so complex? Or can it be simplified? Do we need super high accuracy? Or do we need just ballpark uh, numbers? Or do we just need to know that the helicopter is not going to fall out of the air and it'll stay up? So again, uh, you can make a complex model. You can make a simple model. Okay, and Both of those apply to whatever type of modeling you're doing. If you're doing uh, a mathematical model, you can make it very complex with very complex differential equations. If you're doing a physical model, you can make a, you know, a physical prototype of a helicopter and make it fly, or, uh, or, or you can make a computational model and build it in, in a, a 3D virtual environment in a computer and add many uh, physics to it and make it complex, or you can make it simple, okay? So actually making it, making it uh, the right choice is usually to make a simple model that yields satisfactory results, okay? So, um, uh, and again, that's, uh, that's actually a skill uh, to be able to judge and determine what is the right model based on the results uh, we need, okay? So let me give you a couple of examples of uh, other things that we can model. Um, so here's an example of modeling uh, a ventricle or blood flow through the mitral valve in, in the um, ventricle of the heart. Okay. So again, this model could be very, very complex, uh, or it could be simplified into something uh, as simple as this uh, geom elliptical geometry uh, here, which uh, simulates the ventricle inside the heart. And it could even be further simplified as a 2D model here, where this is the ventricle of the heart, this is the blood flowing through the ventricle and flowing through the, the mitral valve here as the mitral valve opens. Now this, uh, this approach greatly simplifies the model greatly so again um, it will be less accurate but the question is how accurate do you need to be do you need to be super accurate or do you um, just need to be able uh, to make judgment calls on certain parameters okay here's another example of uh, simplifying a ventricle of the heart this would be the uh, heart wall the muscles of, uh, surrounding the ventricle. This would be the, the ventricle cavity and blood flowing in through the valve when the valve is open. And here would be blood flowing out uh, of the valve. I believe uh, this is the mitral valve, so uh, this is uh, the left ventricle of the heart and uh, flowing into the um, uh, the aortic artery and the aortic arch here as blood flows. So again, this is just a, uh, this is an example of, of something you could model um, uh, and how you can model it. And you can make it very complex or you could uh, think of how, ways to simplify the model. And again, like I said earlier, it's a skill to be able to simplify the model and identify, okay, what are the important parts that need to be modeled, and uh, what are the uh, less important parts of the geometry that can be left out, and uh, how accurate do you need to be, okay? So again, uh, like I said earlier, all models will be wrong, but some are useful, okay? Just like uh, uh, mathematical equations may not completely 
accurately model the world around us, but they're useful, right? So we use them, okay? And when we need to be more accurate, we get into more complex uh, differential equations, okay? Um, and so what's important to remember uh, is that, uh, here's a good example, is that an excellent word processing program will not make a person a good writer, okay? It simply makes a good writer a more efficient writer. Same thing with models, okay? Or same thing with computers. Uh, a good computer and a good modeling software won't make a good um, model or, or make a good engineer. Instead, it just makes a good engineer more efficient, okay? So fundamental uh, when uh, concept when it comes to modeling is that uh, um, um, the modeling software is just a tool, okay? And uh, the engineer has to have a good understanding of the physics and the governing equations and what they're trying to model uh, in the software, okay? All right, so uh, the type of modeling software that we're going to be using in this class is uh, ComSol Multiphysics. So why are we using uh, ComSol Multiphysics? Well, it's, uh, uh, as the name suggests, it's a multiphysics modeling software. It has the ability to model multiple different types of physics, including heat transfer, fluid flow, structural mechanics, acoustics, even chemical reactions and electromagnetic fields. In this class, uh, we'll, we'll primarily just work with structural mechanics, fluid flow, and heat transfer. Um, but uh, um, again, com com the reason we're using COMSOL is because it's a multi-physics modeling software. And it's also um, uh, uh, fairly easy to use. It has a, a, a user interface, a kind of a graphical user interface that allows you to, um, you know, bring in a certain geometry or make a certain geometry that you want to model. It could be a simplified 2D geometry or, uh, or it could be a more complex 3D geometry. And it allows you to set up and apply uh, the physics, and the different boundary conditions, um, and model it. Okay, so uh, again, COMSOL, the general workflow when it comes to COMSOL, how, it's, how it works, is based on this finite element uh, method. Okay, so finite element analysis is where the geometry is broken into a whole bunch of tiny pieces um, in which the governing equations are applied to each of these finite elements. And the basic workflow or the basic steps when it comes to modeling <clears throat> is first you bring in the geometry. That's the CAD importation. Okay, You bring in whatever uh, uh, geometry you have. And COMSOL has uh, the ability to make geometry. So you can, you can uh, uh, make uh, 2D or 3D geometry uh, uh, in COMSOL or it has also the ability to import uh, uh, CAD geometry from different uh, CAD software, such as SolidWorks. So we're, we'll, in this class, we'll be using SolidWorks combined with uh, ComSol. And we'll make some geometry in SolidWorks and import it into ComSol. And I'll show you guys how to live link those <clears throat> and work with them that way. We'll also just work in ComSol and I'll show you how to make geometry in COMSOL and, um, and both 2D and 3D uh, as well. So the basic steps uh, is to first bring in the, the CAD geometry or make the CAD geometry. Okay, and then, uh, then we uh, uh, can mesh the geometry. Again, and COMSOL makes this very simple in that uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's just as uh, another step in the process, whereas in reality, uh, finite element analysis can get very complex uh, very fast. 
And so COMSOL simplifies it greatly in that it, uh, it's just a number of uh, steps that you have to do, and it will do all of the finite element analysis for you. Okay. The next step would be to set up the physical problem. Okay, that involves the physics, uh, applying boundary conditions and uh, initial conditions, and then uh, solve it. And again, the the model, because this is a computer, like a calculator, will do the solving for you, and then allow you to visualize the results, uh, and then uh, do any post processing and export the data. Again, because COMSOL uh, uh, multiphysics uh, is a multiphysics modeling software, there's a whole bunch of different types of modules that you can use uh, to model. Now, we don't have all these modules, okay? So there's an RF module, there's a uh, uh, wave optics module, uh, an electrical AC-DC mod module. So we don't have... Uh, all these modules, but we do have the heat transfer module, we do have the fluid dynamics module, and we have the structural mechanics module. Uh, so those will be the ones that we focus on uh, mostly in this class. Okay, so uh, also at the at a console comes in a base package, okay, which allows you to do most of this uh, uh, modeling at more of a entry uh, entry level or elementary level uh, basic modeling on all types of physics. And to get it deeper into any kind of physics, you'll need to have uh, the specific package that goes with it. So let me give you a couple of examples of the different type of modeling. So here's an example of uh, some of the thermal modeling capabilities. Here's an example of, say, you wanted to model uh, heat transfer on the brakes of a car. Okay, so these are uh, the disc, the disc heating on a car when the brakes are applied. Or say you wanted to model uh, um, heat transfer on a heat sink inside of a computer. Okay, you could do you could do this and set up. Uh, uh, fluid flowing over these pins and the heat coming up through these pins and you can model that. Here's an example of uh, bio uh, computational modeling trying to model heat transfer in the human body. This is actually an example of uh, one of the homework assignments that we'll do in this class where we apply heat transfer and uh, model heat in, in the body. You can see here how uh, the fingers are colder and the toes are colder and the core uh, is warmer and uh, again we can we can apply this to uh, different types of questions to solve different uh, types of problems. There's another example of some uh, structural mechanics modeling. Okay. And uh, you can model both, you can model things like uh, steady state uh, structural mechanics. That's where the sum of the forces equals zero, or, or uh, the model, the structure's not moving. You can also even model uh, transient state uh, uh, mechanics, okay? That's where something is moving, okay? It's um, uh, the sum of the forces in that case doesn't equal zero. Okay, um, and let me show you some examples of uh, some structural mechanics. This would be an example of um, modeling a stent uh, that would go inside the artery. Uh, um, so uh, um, stents are often used in patients that have uh, atherosclerotic uh, or, or uh, plaque buildup in their arteries. They'll often insert this stent and balloon it like it's shown here and uh, open up the artery. Okay, and it'll hold the artery open. So this is an example of modeling uh, some structural some structural modeling capabilities in COPSOL. Modeling uh, some structural mechanics and elastic properties of a stent that would go inside the artery 
of a patient with uh, atherosclerosis. Here's another example. Um, you could uh, even uh, 3D scan a patient-specific geometry. For example, this is someone's foot in our lab uh, that we um, scanned. And you could bring in this geometry into COMSOL and you can start applying physics to it. And so you say you wanted to model um, a prosthetic uh, or an orthotic, uh, a brace that would go around this person's foot and how it would work. Uh, uh, you could do that uh, with COMSOL by uh, first scanning the patient-specific geometry and then bringing it in. And you could also even bring it in from like an MRI scan or a CT scan or uh, different things like that, okay? Uh, here's another example of uh, um, blood flowing through uh, uh, a bifurcated artery, okay? Here's an example, and this would be an example of a, a non-steady state um, or transient state fluid flow uh, mechanics um, because uh, blood flowing through our body is not continuous, right? Instead, it's pulsatile. Every time your heart beats, blood uh, um, pulses through the arteries and veins. And so this is an example of modeling uh, fluid flow uh, through an artery. Uh, same thing if you wanted to model stress and strain on a, a bone or a, a, a human femur, okay? Actually, when you walk, uh, the bones actually flex a little bit. They bend a little bit under the load, okay? And so to model it, uh, you could actually model, model this and measure the different stress and strain uh, on the bone, okay? Here's another example of that structural mechanics. Say you wanted to um, uh, build an artificial hip uh, that might go in here and see how uh, whether or not it'll hold up uh, when a person walks okay so those are just some examples here's some other examples of uh, fluid flow uh, capabilities um, again you can model flow uh, in pipes you can model flow uh, around an object uh, you can model, uh, do something, some kind of modeling called uh, fluid structure interactions. Okay, this is an example of mo modeling the aortic arch uh, that uh, comes off of the human heart and breaks into the different uh, arteries that feed uh, your neck and your arms, the brachial arteries and the carotid arteries. You could even do some particle tracing uh, uh, modeling, okay? Uh, where if you have some uh, chemicals uh, mixing together, you could uh, 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 model how those particles and those chemicals would would mix together, and then you could you can visualize uh, the fluid flow and do something called particle tracing uh, as well. Uh, COMSOL also has the capability of modeling acoustics, okay? Um, so acoustics are, no, are really nothing but uh, pressure waves or mechanical vibrations in the air, and you can actually model this. So this is an example of modeling uh, sound pressure levels around a speaker, okay? Or you could model uh, a car muffler. Okay, so the muffler uh, makes the car sound, uh, it muffles the sound of the engine, right? Uh, and say you wanted to make a better muffler, well, you could do that in a model, in a computational model. Uh, this is an example of modeling an ultrasound transducer, uh, piezoelectric uh, crystal at the tip of an ultrasound transducer. So again, there's a whole bunch of different types of models uh, that you can do. And again, the power of computational modeling is that you can prototype and build something um, very inexpensively or very cheap 
uh, because you don't have to actually make the physical part. You can instead uh, just make it in the computer. Make a 3D drawing of it, apply the physics, and see how it works. Okay, here's another example of uh, uh, chemical reactions that could be modeled. Let's say you have uh, one species A and another species B that are being mixed together. Uh, you could model the chemical reactions there. Okay, uh, so there are a whole bunch of different types of modeling uh, capabilities. Uh, in this class, like I mentioned, uh, our primary focus will be on modeling structural mechanics, fluid dynamics, and um, heat transfer. Okay, but uh, um, just a couple more examples, one more example here. Uh, here's an example of monitoring uh, uh, the absorption of radiation in the human head using a cell phone antenna. Uh, so these are, uh, this would be an example of using electromagnetic fields and bioheat uh, transfer. Okay, so this is just a quick introduction to uh, biocomputational modeling and the type of modeling that we will be doing in this class and, uh, and a brief introduction into COMSOL uh, multiphysics.